Recently, I got interested in this new experimental Unity animation system for dots. So I did a little research and I decided to try out the C sharp job system first before I got to everything else. So here I have the same scene, the Bezier scene from the last video. The only difference is that for the quadratic Bezier curve, I can either choose to use the job system or not. Right now, you don't see any difference because it's a single object with a function that barely costs anything. But the job system is an important part of DOTS because it allows you to safely use multi-threading. Many game developers stay away from multi-threading because it can lead to situations where threads are trying to modify the same data. It can lead to unexpected results that are sometimes almost impossible to debug. But the job system takes care of all of that, so you can think of it as a layer that allows you to get the performance benefits without the unstable part of multi-threading. Here is a simple example for the quadratic Bezier. And you don't necessarily have to understand multi-threading. You just got to be able to use the job system, like here. All we're doing is creating a job, scheduling it, and running it, and getting the results. If I look inside, this is a struct. Inside the struct, we have some values, and we also define what the job is. When you run the job, we use the values to calculate the Bezier curve, just like the last video. This is the same as this. So nothing too complex here. All you got to do is define the job and schedule it. From the main thread, all you can do is schedule it, and Unity will run multiple jobs for you at the same time, and you don't have to worry about how multi-threading is done. Complete is just something that ensures that a job has been completed. This is necessary because, like I said earlier, multi-threading can have many issues, and this is one of the things that prevents them. And when the job is finished, you get the result. This might be the extra step that can be confusing. First, you got to consider what a struct is. From the outside, using a reference, you cannot change the values inside a struct. The problem is that inside the struct, we get the position on the Bezier curve after it executes. If you try to get this value from the outside, you're getting a copy of it that was made initially when the struct was first created, and that's not the result of the execution. This is where the native arrays come in, because it allows you to reference that value you want. And the other way of getting the Bezier curve is the same thing. I'm just using index 0, because there's only one value I want. If I go back, so from the outside, after making sure the job has been completed, we can reference the result value and that changes the cube position on the curve. One thing about the native array is that it's not managed by the garbage collector, so we have to dispose it after using it and prevent memory leak. Also make sure that you read the Uni documentation on allocator options. It's just how you allocate memory to the native array and how long you want to keep it before it's disposed. So this is just a simple example, but it's not a very good one because you're still going through the update for each of the game objects, which is not all that different from single threading. Perhaps a slightly better example and this isn't necessarily very good either, but here it is. Lots of Bezier scene. Here's a script that creates a lot of Bezier curves, 1000. But you don't need multi-threading for a bunch of Bezier curves. So I created this temporary script, costly. This is just to slow down your CPU. And I've put it inside the calculations. So if I run this, you have 1,000 Bezier curves. It's almost freezing my computer. And let me look at the stats. Okay, we're getting five frames per second. But if I switch to jobs, we get 100 frames per second. Pretty cool stuff. If I look at the code for this, again, we can either choose to use jobs, the job here, or use the traditional way. This job is slightly different from the first example. Because we're not getting a value for one cube, we're getting values for a thousand cubes. And just for this experiment, I randomized the position on the curve. If I look at the job, again, it's a struct, but it's a different type of a job. Notice the difference. Here's the first example. The big difference is that instead of doing just one job, we do multiple jobs for every element in a native container. So back in the code for the Bezier handler, instead of copying one value, we copy a thousand values for a thousand cubes. And just like the first example, we use these values to calculate the Bezier curve. And we schedule a thousand jobs. 
The 100 here refers to the batch size. It just refers to how you divide your work into chunks, but make sure you read the unit documentation. So anyways, this example is not all that different from the first one. We're just looping through an array. And let me show it to you again. Jobs. No jobs. Usually in an actual game, the case is not as extreme as this. And the job system is just one part of dots, so you can do a lot more than this. I think for my game, I'm going to make the gradual shift. It's not going to happen in a single day. But if your code is modular and manageable, you should be able to make the changes slowly over time while at the same time developing your game. Here's a video by CodeMonkey that really helped me get started with the job system. I'm going to have the links below, and for more details, you can always reach me on my Discord server. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.